So we were going to knock out this next box called Crocodile, um, but Hack the Box just came out with a new one called Three. Uh, so let's try this one instead. Uh, my VPN is already up and running and the box is currently spawning. So let's give this one a shot instead. Okay, so for Norm, we're gonna create a box called Three and then CD into it. Um, from here, we're gonna perform an Nmap scan of the scripts and services as usual, ignoring host discovery, and then taking this IP and then outputting it into a file called initial Nmap. And we're gonna let this run and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, reviewing our scans, we see port 22, SSH, and port 80 running Apache. Uh, the title is The Toppers. Um, so let's go ahead and enumerate port 80 more through the web browser. So let's go to the web page. Um, let's go to the IP. Uh, first, we can open up the page source. Uh, we can see it's running running WordPress. Um, not too much uh, when it's revealing any additional information. Uh, scrolling through it real quick. Again, pretty static, sold out, sold out. We can attempt to buy a ticket uh test at test.com a uh it really doesn't seem functional at this point but we do see that the domain is the toppers.htb um try going to ban and it just goes to the various various links um here we can do a quick test and see if this works and really not a lot of information um the one thing you might want to note uh this is a firefox add-on called wapalizer uh so it'll tell you the different technologies behind the stack. And again, it's telling us that it's running Apache 2.429.2429. Uh, it's behind Cloudflare, possibly running Ubuntu. But one thing we want to note is it's running PHP. Um, another way we could potentially identify this is running Nikto and seeing it if it creates those PHP session IDs. Um, but let's keep that in mind. So let's go back to this contact field and noting this, the toppers.htb. So there's a file on most Linux systems, all Linux systems, uh, called Etsy hosts. And this is used to resolve uh, host name into an IP address. Uh, by default, this file is queried by the DNS server for host name resolution uh, before like reaching out to the internet. Um, in our case, it may be beneficial um, to add this, the toppers.htb with the attributed IP address into our Etsy host file. Um, and you can see this progressively as we move on towards more labs in Hack the Box. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, uh, let's sudo vim etsy host and then append a new line including this new IP address about the toppers.htb save quit. And then we can confirm that by doing the toppers.htb 
and we get a similar page source. So you may be asking yourself right now, now what? Right? Um, you've enumerated the web page, can't really find any avenues. Most of the functions aren't working, right? So the benefit of Hack the Box is that it kind of gives you a list of tasks to do, right? For this first starting point labs. Um, again, helping you develop that methodology when enumerating a target. So we've already completed this resolving host names to IP address with the Etsy hosts. But now it's asking us subdomains. Um, and if you're not familiar with subdomains, don't worry, I'm about to explain them to you. So subdomains are basically um, an additional piece of information before the actual domain. In our case, like right here, we have hacked the box as our domain, but then we have the subdomain of app, right? This uh, basically allows organizations to separate and organize content in a way specific to the function allocated to that specific subdomain. So for example, if there's a static.hackthebox.com, uh, those could comprise of all of your JavaScript files, your CSS files that help that front end user um, experience where static is the subdomain, hack the box is the primary domain, and .com is the top level domain. With that, um, sometimes subdomains will exist on separate IP addresses, but there's something called virtual hosting, uh, vhost, where these web applications can exist on the same IP address as those primary domains. And with that information, we can further enumerate existing virtual hosts on this IP address um, that may potentially exist by various methods, uh, primarily brute forcing uh, subdomains and seeing the HTTP response. So my go-to tool is GoBuster. Um, GoBuster allows vhost enumeration. So we can go ahead and use this tool to further enumerate this web application. Okay, we can go ahead and type in GoBuster vhost, uh, specify the word list. Um, again, I like using Seclist discovery dns for subdomain enumeration and then let's use the top 5000 um and then here we'll specify the url http the toppers.htb we can let this run uh right away we see one called s3 the toppers htb that's pretty interesting, right? So let's go ahead and add this domain to our Etsy host file because it could potentially be a virtual host. So from here, we'll just copy this, uh, sudo vim etsy host, and then 10.129.21239. And then throw that one in there. We can go ahead and curl the page again and see that we can connect to it. Uh, and whatever it is, it's running. So if you Google what S3 is, um, you'll come across what are known as AWS. S3 buckets, which are Amazon's uh, cloud-based storage service kind of thing. Um, it basically allows you to store things in a container called buckets, 
uh, generally used for like static text files or images, um, but they have various use cases. These could range from backup and storage, media hosting, or just various files on a static web server. But in order for us to interact with it, um, we're going to have to install uh, AWS CLI. So we'll just apt install AWS CLI. And then one of the first steps we're going to want to do is type in AWS configure. Um, here, we're going to want to configure various test keys. Uh, so after we install that, one of the first steps we're going to want to do is configure our AWS uh, keys. Um, since we're just testing to see like basic unauthenticated access, uh, we're going to want to just type in very arbitrary values. So I'll just type in test for everything. And then from here, we're going to want to test if we can see if we can list all the S3 buckets by the server. Um, so we're going to do AWS tac tac endpoint. And then the bucket we found and then specify S3 and then LS. And this is our only bucket. Um, here we can then type in LS S3, the toppers.htb. And we can see that it contains a image directory, an HT access file, and the index.php, which we interacted with when we first enumerated the web application. Again, noting the PHP endpoint. So this AWS command line uh, tool also allows us to copy items to the S3 bucket. So we know that the endpoint uses PHP. Um, so from here, we can try and upload a PHP reverse shell. Um, we can first locate the built-in um, PHP scripts and copy the one to our current directory. And this is because once we upload it to the root of the directory where everything is located at, um, it will execute the file and hopefully achieve remote execution. So we'll go ahead and open up this reverse shell and locate our callback address right here and enter in our ton zero address, which I don't know off the top of our head, but we can find right here. Noting that our port is port 8888. So we'll go ahead and save and close out of this. Uh, then we're gonna up arrow to this command and replace our uh, ls with a copy and then our php script to this s3 bucket and it was successful um from here we're gonna type in netcat at nblp 8888 and then go to our web address specifying php tag reverse shell.php and boom 
we have a shell. Of course, uh, we can already see for WW data, but our goal is to find flag.txt. So if we do flat, uh, find, spec specify the directory, tag name, flag.txt, type all errors to two dev null, and hopefully we find, oh, there it is, right? We'll let this finish out. Hit enter a few times, and then cat var ww flag.txt, and there you go. All done. So let's get into the task questions now that we actually found the flag.txt. So the first question is how many TCP ports are open? Um that was SSH and port 80, which is HTTP, so that's two. Next one, what is the domain of the email address provided in the contact session of the website? Uh, that was the toppers.htb. In the absence of a DNS server, which Linux file can we use to resolve host names to IP addresses? That was Etsy OS. Which subdomain is discovered during further enumeration? That was using GoBuster and finding S3, the toppers.htb. Which service is running on the disc discovered subdomain? Uh, Amazon S3. Which command line utility can be used to interact with the service running on the discovered subdomain? That was AWS CLI. Which command is used to set up the AWS CLI installation? That was the one that we used to specify arbitrary values, uh, in our case, test. And what is the command used by the above utility to list all the S3 buckets? Um, I would guess AWS S3 LS. Okay. This server is configured to run files written in what web scripting language? PHP. And then we submit our root flag. Boom. Easy. So I hope that was pretty straightforward for you guys. Uh, many organizations utilize the cloud for various use cases. Um, this specifically was for cloud-based storage. Um, but I hope it was pretty straightforward for you. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, share it with a friend. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.